Okay, this is Fizz2320 Computing 2, and this is the third video in the series on the SciPy package, uh, looking at numerical Python. And in this video, we're going to be talking about doing calculus. Okay, so in the last two videos, uh, we were using SciPy.optimize, fmin, and fsolve to look for uh, minima and finding roots uh, in continuous functions. Um, and then we uh, use scipy.interpolate module um, to uh, look at interpolating data uh, between data points for when you've got the case where you've got a discrete set of sample data uh, and then also using splines uh, to fit to noisy data um, when the interpolation would go a little bit uh, nuts if you tried using it. So now in this video we're going to look at integrating and differentiating uh, numerical data. Okay, so we're going to start off um, thinking about integrating. Um, so in SciPy, um, it's the scipy.integrate module that provides uh, various numerical integration functions. But first of all, we want to talk a little bit about how you actually uh, do integrate um, numerically. So this is not um, symbolic new, uh, integration, which is just as you do in maths. Um, here we're talking about something where we have a, a set of uh, data or we have some function that can produce data and we're trying to find uh, the integral uh, by actually calculating it. So the simplest thing to go and do is take our set of data and simply add up uh, rectangles under the data like so. Um, and you can see that sort of would give you an approximation to the area under that set of data because it doesn't really take into account that the um, data is going to be joined in some fashion. Um, so you're going to have sort of all these corners, missing corners here, adding corners here, and so on. So a slightly more sophisticated approach would be to go and draw trapezoids between um, each of the uh, data points. And then it's easy to calculate the area of each trapezium um, and uh, sum them up to work out the integral. But just as we did when we looked at the same data for interpolation, if you have a kind of a flat point um, over here, um, between these two data points, then really kind of your eye should say, well, actually, I'm expecting the data that the function I've got should have actually come up and somehow curved around. And so we're kind of underestimating the uh, area uh, under, the, under the data points there. So we'd have to go to a slightly more sophisticated approach. So the next thing we could do is rather than just fitting a straight line between two data points, we could fit a quadratic curve between three and then use that quadratic curve to make an estimate. So something like this. So we would fit over the three points but actually just sum up the the pink area in this diagram. And then we'd move on one set of data points and add up the next set and so on and build up our integral from a series of points like that. And you can see that joins a nice smooth curve through all the data set doing, doing that. And integrating in this algorithm is known as Simpson's rule. Um, and it's fine, but of course you have to have a an end point you have to do with the trapezium because you um, don't have a you, you end up with missing data points at the start here. So to do the full integral from here, you have to have a trapezium at the end and at this end as well, and then use Simpson's rule to calculate the nice smooth curve around here. And you can see that should give you a better estimate of the integral. Okay, so if we go back to our SciPy module, um, in the SciPy integrate module there is this quad function. Um, and a quad actually will try and integrate a continuous 1D function between limits. So if we go over to the um, web page, the reference page for the integrate module, there we have our quad function. And you see, a bit like fmin and fsolve, it takes a function in to start with. It takes in an A and a B, um, so the end and this is basically integrating from A to B. So it takes the end values, the, the limits of the integration, and it takes um, additional arguments into the function. So we can have a little look at using that. Um, and to do that, we're going to go back and use the same function that we were using in the SciPy1 video. So this is, um, just to remind you, um, it produces a function that looks like this. And so we're going to want to go and integrate up um, and see what that uh, what the area under this function actually is. Okay, so all we have to do is 
import the quad function. Uh, quad is really easy. Um, so let's just add the um, output uh, onto uh, our plot. So let's go and put that at um, 0, 2 and we can just give it the output you get from quad. Um, so the quad function is going to take the function we're calling it. Uh, we then need to um, pass it the limits. So bring the help up. Um, so our function, um, our limits, so in this case minus 10 to 10, and then just as we did before with the f min and f solve, we're going to have to give it the parameters we're working with as well. So end of format, so end of quad, end of format, end of text. And somewhere in there it's got something it doesn't like. Ah, oh, there we go. Two comma. Okay. And it should be params. There we go. So this is the bit that's doing the hard work. In fact, let's just run that um, separately for you so we can see that it's doing the right thing. So that's the call I was doing to do the, the integration. So it's taking the function I'm integrating, the lower limit, the upper limit, and then uh, the optional keyword parameter args, taking in all the other parameters that you need to go and call the function. You run it. It returns two things. It returns the area it's worked out under the graph, and then um, it also returns an uncertainty, so an, uh, an estimate of the error in the area. Okay, so if we run that, whoops, ah, two is off the, uh, a y of two is off the scale. Let's move that so it's actually in somewhere we're going to be able to see it. So let's have minus five. One. There you go. So it's put the text in up there. Uh, you see, I'm using the plot dot plot dot text to put text onto the graph. Um, of course, it's not very nice because it's um, got really a ridiculous number of uh, of decimal places there. So again, remember, normally if you're quoting an uncertainty in something, you'd quote it to just one significant figure, and then you'd quote the error the error to the same number of uh, des um decimal places as the um, as the error has been quoted to. Um, of course the error is actually quite small, I mean that's 10 to the minus 9 and this is of order 10 to the minus 2. Um, so you've got about seven digits worth before you start hitting the error. But even so that's a bit of an unrealistic way of quoting numbers but you see it's working. Okay, so that's fine if you've got a continuous function. Quad will go off and integrate it and tell you what the, what the area under the, the curve actually was. Um, so, but of course we don't always have continuous functions um, rather than uh, we often have discrete data points. So what do you do if you've got discrete data points? Well you could of course you could fit a curve or you could create an interpolation function or a spline if it's noisy data. Um, although actually when you integrate you'll find that um, it has the effect of the, the noise is less obvious when you integrate the data. Um, or alternatively, you can use the trapz or simps functions to integrate using the sample data directly, um, using either obviously the trapezium rule or uh, Simpson's rule um, to calculate the area under the curve. Um, however, you need to be aware that just as a quad would return us both the area but also an uncertainty in that area, um, there's always some degree of uncertainty in um, uh, calculating an, uh, an integral numerically. 
um, and unfortunately traps Z and simps um, by the way they work they can't make a sensible estimate of the error because for example um, they have no way of knowing when you join these two points together whether joining it smoothly in the Simpsons rule or joining it with a straight line is actually going to give you um, a real idea of what the area under there is or whether in fact the function should have had some massive big peak like that that it would never have found. Um, unlike quad, the advantage with quad is because it can always go and check um, between data points whether or not the function's got much different from what it was expecting. Um, so just the word of warning, when you use trap Z or simps you are going to have some difference from the true area uh, under the graph but hopefully especially using Simpson's rule it's quite quite a small error. Okay so let's have a look at doing that. Um, so we'll just go back over to the documentation um, and um, you see here trap Z uh, and simps functions. Um, so if we look at say the simps function um, it takes as its first argument the data you're trying to integrate and then optionally the x values um, or if you've not specified the x values you can specify a spacing between the x values um, so you only do that if you're not giving it the x you give it either x or dx um, or else it just assumes it's one um, and then again you've got other uh, options that control uh, find the details of what's going on okay so let's go and do that in code so for this set I'm going to go and work with the same set of data that we used on the second video in this series. So again just to remind you what it looked like, we load it in off disk and plot it and it looks like that. Um, so it's just a series of oscillations um, gradually adding up over time. So now what we can do is we can um, import oops, from scipy integrate import uh, trap z and simps and now what we could do is we can just have it label um, uh, points on the graph uh, let's just remind ourselves where the axes are there so I'm going to like put some labels in at minus four and one and a half um, and minus four and one to say what the two integrals were. So trap z area equals trap z y comma x. Notice of course that you're specifying it y x rather than x y. Um, that's a common error to go and make. Otherwise you end up integrating the the data the wrong way round. Same with the Simpsons rule, y x. Uh, okay, that's good. Plot dot text minus four one point five. go so that's just calculating the area using the trapezium rule the trap z function or the area using the simpsons rule the simps function and then just adding it to the plot um, just to show you what it gives and there we go and whoops i made a mistake in the trap z which is why it didn't work it needs to be a curly brace like that make sure the brace is balanced try it again there we go. Okay, and you can see that in this case the trapezium function, the Simpson functions are giving you slightly different answers. So they're different by um, about 1%, uh, no, less than that, 0.2% difference. So it's small, but it is there. It is a real difference. Um, so that's okay. That's just calculating the total area under the, under the graph. Because what you might be interested in is actually seeing what that integral actually looked like. 
um, as a function of x. So in other words, calculating the area starting from here, um, so we go um, negative and then a bit positive, and then the big sway negative, um, and gradually building up the area. So in other words, to make up a cumulative integral. Um, so in other words, what you'd get if you actually calculated the integral and then plotted it out on the graph. So we can go and do that using the cum traps function. So it's just another function to add in there. Um, and in this case, it's going to generate a set of uh, data. So it's going to generate a big array of data. So again, you can see it takes the y and the x data. But now what's going to return an integral is um, an array that is um, a length um, slightly different from the x and the y. Let's just run that and I'm going to show you what it actually gives us. OK, so that's the same as before, but let's go look at the variable explorer. So you see the integral array here is 199 long, but our x, sorry, is 99 long, but our x is 100 long, as is our um, y. OK, so what's happened here um, is really quite obvious. If we just go back and look um, at how the uh, integrals are calculated, then what you can see is that if I count the number of trapeziums I have here, it's going to be one less than the number of data points I have. So what Hume Traps is doing is it's giving me the area of this um, uh, trapezium, and then the area of this trapezium plus the area of this trapezium, and then the area of this trapezium, this trapezium, and this trapezium, and then the area of those four trapeziums, and then the area of those five trapeziums. So the time it gets to the end is going to return one fewer values than the number of data points I have, because the area of this trapezium is really associated with the midpoint between this value and this value, and likewise the area of this trapezium is associated with the midpoint between here and here. Well, why is this important? Well, if we want to go and plot our data, what we really want to do is plot this integral versus an x-coordinate. But we can't just simply use our x here because it's got one more row than we have values of integral. So what we're going to do is going to create a midpoint between the two sets of the data. I'm just going to do a little trick with the numpy indexing here. So I'm going to index from the start to minus 1, and from 1 to the end. So that's going to get, um, and I'm going to take the sum of those two and divide it by 2. So that's going to find the average between the 0th and the 1st um, coordinate, and the 1st and the 2nd, and so on, all the way up to you get to the um, second last one and the last one. So that's going to create an array that is 99 rows long. So now I can plot x mid integral and let's do that as a line. OK, and now I can run that and there you go. So there you can see um, here's the integral being calculated. So as I said, it starts off. Um, it's a little bit negative to start with, it goes a little bit positive, there's a big slew negative and it gradually builds up as you start getting this positive area here, um, but then this negative area makes it level off and go down a bit, and then this big positive area brings it back up, and you see the final value you get up to here. Um, if you see the little readout down here, I get to, if I point it at the last corner there, so it's about 1.22, 1.26, somewhere in there. Um, if I just zoom in on the end value. You see it's 1.24, 1.25. It's exactly the same number as we were getting when we used the um, trapezium or Simpson's rules to go and calculate the whole thing. So you see the final value is what you'd expect. It's the, it's the final integral. But the cumulative trapezium has, rule has produced the whole curve for us. So that's really useful if what you've been given is a set of data which is actually the differential of some quantity with respect to the x-axis. You can reintegrate it back up to find what that quantity originally was. 
Okay, so that's integration. Um, differentiation. So SciPy can also find derivatives for you. Um, so it has this function scipy.misc.derivative. Um, and what it's doing is it's using what's called the central difference formula. So it's essentially just calculating uh, two points on either side of the uh, place you're interested in evaluating the derivative, finding the difference, and then dividing by the um, the, the the width of the um, integral. This is this is exactly the same thing as you would have done um, in probably maths one when you were being shown how differentiation actually came about. Um, so it's exactly the same thing, just being done numerically. You need to choose the value of h rather carefully, however. So if you make it too small, then you're um, vulnerable to, well, if there's any kind of noise in your data, but also if you're just doing this with a smooth function, um, you're vulnerable to numerical errors because you start dividing things by very, very small numbers and then it gets um, possible you get large errors introduced. On the other hand, if you make the h too big, then um, you lose accuracy. The other problem, of course, if you think it's too small an h is it just takes too long to do the calculations. So um, like uh, the quad function, the um, misc derivative function wants a continuous uh, function to work with. So um, you either have to use a, a fitting function or you have to interpolate if you have actual uh, data points. Um, but we can go and show how it's being used um, uh, with our set of data that we were looking at with the quad function. So we go back to, so this again is back to what we were looking at um, Previously, we were looking at um, integrating things with the quad function. So now we're going to do differentiation. So from scipy.misc import oops, scipy derivative. that. Um, let's just run that again. There's our function. So what we're going to do is going to calculate the derivative for this function. I'm going to plot it. Okay. Oh, defunc is equal to Okay, so our derivative function um, wants to go and take the function that we're integrating um, and then it's going to take um, a set of x values um, so we'll just give it the x values we've got and then we need to specify uh, what dx as well so by default it's like a dx of one and I'll show you in a second what the problems are with using the, um, the standard value so this is your if you like the h value we were talking about um, just previously and then of course we need to give it the um, parameters that we're working with and then we'll plot that as well whoops defunc and I'll plot that as a red line okay so the hard work is just being done in here. We're giving the derivative. It's again just like sort of thing we're dealing with x min and f, and sorry, f min and f solve and quad. We're passing in the function just as the name of the function, and then we're giving it, um, in this case, the x values we want to evaluate the derivative at, and the dx, and then the other arguments you need to get the um, the function looking right. And there we go. So the red curve here is a derivative and you can just sort of sanity check it, see that when that turns, the blue function is turning, the red function is indeed going through zero. Turning, it is in fact going through zero. Um, again, turning here, it's coming through zero, more or less, um, and so on. So that looks, on the face of it, looks right. You can see this is the steep part. Yes, that's steep. Um, so that all seems to work um, uh, fairly nicely. Um, what we could of course do is we could just check that if we've got this right because the blue function ends up at zero if we integrate the red data it should come quite close to zero as well so let's just go and check that's actually happening um, in fact let's do simps and 
human traps and then what we can do is we can um, text just add go so I'm just going to integrate up the derivative back up with respect to X and add it to some text to our plot and if we look at that you can see that the final value that according to Simpson's rule is something very 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 small 10 to the minus 9 um, uh, of course it's not exactly equal to 0 because the Simpson's rule has some uncertainty and error in it so um, and also where we've evaluated our derivative only as a fixed number of data points. Um, and again, another sort of just sanity check, what we can do um, is we could have a look at the cumulative um, function and that should overlay our original data quite nicely. So um, just as we were doing before with the integral, I'm going to calculate a set of data points that's the midpoint between all the values of x like so uh, whoops yep no that's fine Okay, and put that as a green line. So what we should find now is we're going to have in blue we'll have the original function we've got. Um, in red I'm going to plot the derivative, and then in green I'm going to plot the cumulative integral of the derivative, which should line up very very closely to the original function in blue. So the difference in the blue and the green is the error you get from having first of all calculated the derivative numerically and then having recalculated the integral numerically. Okay, so let's just run that. There we go, and you can see the green and the blue really are lining up fairly closely. Let's see if we can split them if we... Oh, there you go. You can just, when you zoom in, see that they're ever so slightly different. Um, but it's pretty close. Okay, now what happens if we do the derivative with too big a step size? So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to change that from dx equals 0 0.1 to dx equals 1.0. So now what that means is that it's going to evaluate the function at any point by looking at one, uh, a value of one um, ahead and one behind of the point we're looking. So when I run that, now you see something's gone rather badly wrong. So the blue is our original function. The red has been evaluated by looking at a value of 1.0 to this side and 1.0 to this side. So this point here in the red, I've estimated by evaluating the blue function minus 1 and plus 1. Now the problem is the blue function wiggles on a scale of that's comparable to the distance I'm looking backwards and forwards in order to calculate the derivative. So if I, for example, zoom in to this region here. So if I look at the value at 2.5, what I've done is I've calculated the blue function at 3.5 and at 1.5 and I've drawn a straight line from there to there and said so that slope is the derivative. Now you can see that's really not capturing the shape of the blue curve very well and so the red um, is value is wrong so then when I reintegrate it you can also see that the blue value is wrong and now you can also see that my final value of my integral is not bad because the, um, the when I reintegrate the red because it still oscillates more or less about zero but you see it's ten times bigger than it used to be so by getting the wrong value of h I managed to make a big mess of calculating the integrals uh, of calculating, calculating the derivative and that therefore feeds in error when I try and recalculate an integral back up again um, 
So the, the problem of getting the wrong value of h is the difference between the blue and the green curve. Um, if I go to the other extreme and give it a very, very small value of h, then you see it's, it's diminishing returns. It's still getting an error, which is something of order of 10 to the minus 9. Um, the green and the blue curve do line up. But actually, the difference between them is rather similar to what we had when we used a much bigger value of h. So there's really no advantage there at all. Um, and if you go completely wild on it, um, then you see it just goes completely haywire. Um, it's just if you get too small a value of, of dx, um, then it can't cope at all, and it ends up just giving you no no derivative at all. Um, that's because of, that's such a small difference that it can't tell the difference for any value on, on this on the blue function here. If you look such a small difference away and such a small difference away, you end up with such a small change in the value of the y coordinate that the derivative ends up being approximately zero, um, no matter what you do. Um, so that's why you can't go too small. Um, you have to go and pick a sensible value. Um, and what a sensible value is basically is determined by uh, the scale on which you think your function is oscillating. Okay, um, so of course if you've got sample data um, then you're going to have to go and do something with it. So you've got a couple of options. As I said before you could use an interpolation or a fit or a spline function, all of which we should, well the fit we're going to show you in the next video, the interpolation and the spline we've showed you in video two. Um, You've also got a couple of options, which I'm not going to demonstrate here, but they you can look them up in the documentation if you need to use them at some point. So there's a Zavitsky Goulet filter, um, which is this um, scipy.signal.zavgol filter. Um, that's a particularly good f um, way of finding it if you're looking at spectroscopic data. Um, that's where it was originally um, uh, developed. What it's basically doing is it's working out a polynomial locally to your data and then using the coefficients of that po local polynomial fit to calculate a derivative. And then if your data is periodic then there's techniques you can use using Fourier transforms and there's this um, uh, FFT based derivative um, in the scipy.fft pack module. Um, but again that really only works if your data is actually periodic. So, in summary, if you've got a continuous function, or you can interpolate or fit a spline or something like that, then uh, scipy.integrate.quad can be used for integration, and misc derivative you can use for differentiation. Um, if you have discrete or sample data, then you can integrate with the trap Z or the Simpsons, or if you need to get the a sort of a running integral, you can use the uh, cube traps functions. Um, differentiation is harder um, if you can't fit your data somehow or uh, use a spline or whatever um, then have a look at using either the Zavitsky-Goulet filter or if it's periodic you could use that um, FFT function.